Hello everybody! ChuchiC Anime here and today we are gonna be reviewing Reborn as a Vending Machine. I now wandered the dungeon or Jido, Hanabaiki or Baki, whatever, uh Ni Amrikawada Ore wa Mekyu wo Samayo. I probably said that completely wrong. I don't care, we're just gonna roll with it. So, what is the story of this anime? Basically, a guy who's really into vending machines ends up getting crushed by a vending machine while he's riding his bike after he tries to save the vending machine from falling off, and after that he finds himself in a fantasy world where he is now a vending machine, where he's now stuck in a dungeon where he meets a girl known as Lamas who decides to carry him around and help him enjoy this dungeon adventure as a fantasy vending machine, but... <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't make too much sense to me either, but we're just gonna roll with it. So, in terms of spoiler-free thoughts, this anime is kind of wild. Like, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, when they heard this concept of a isekai vending anime, or like vending machine anime, they probably thought, like me, just thought, what the heck are we doing here, man? What What is this? Why? Why does this exist? And I was really ready to just laugh the heck out of this anime by it being super bad, like one of those it's so bad it's good anime, it's kind of like Soma Spider, so what? But then I actually watched it, and the first thing you have to say is, why was this actually kind of well written? <laughs> like, not everything is perfect. It definitely is one of those anime that you don't have to really get super invested in. It's not an anime that has a particularly deep story, or deep characters. The story is very much like a slice of life type show, with a bit of action sprinkled in here and there. And... It's fine overall as a show, it's just kind of fine, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy some parts of it. Like, the first few episodes of this show, I was just fully into it. Like, I was laughing and having so much fun, and I think it was just because later on they try to make things a bit more serious at times, that it kind of fell apart for me a little bit, but we can talk about more of that in the spoiler section. But in terms of this show just in general, I had a good time. I genuinely had a really fun time while watching. Our main character, who in this series goes by the name of Boxo, it's kind of fun to watch, especially with how he has like this super big knowledge of vending machines. I could do all these kinds of things. And I want to say this right now, I'm amazed at how they kind of incorporated the vending machine into the fantasy like element where it's clearly a vending machine. We all know it. It's super obvious that it's a vending machine. And yet despite that, it's really well handled in how it kind of introduces a point system and stuff like that to help show how the vending machine works in this fantasy world. And while there are some things I kind of wish this show would do that I understand they won't do for a while maybe because, you know, it would kind of ruin the whole point of it. I still really enjoyed a lot of elements in how the vending machine was incorporated into the story, as it could have easily all fallen apart. Like, it could have easily been an absolutely, like, terrible, just dump of crap, and I think that the way they handled this show, where its absurd idea and its absurdity, just in general, could have been stupid and could have been terrible, and yet it's so freaking fun at times that... Well, sometimes I'm just like, okay, that's stupid, but I'll roll with it. There are other times where I'm thinking, this is so stupid, I am loving this. I'm just having such a great time. It really just kind of depends on the timing and the moments. And moving on past all that for now, I'd actually like to talk about the characters a little bit, where in terms of the characters, they're just kind of all right. Some of them are interesting, some of them aren't. It's just kind of this mixed bag where I'm curious to see where some of the things go. Like, I don't hate her, but the main character, Lamas, is kind of... I guess the word is bland, almost. She doesn't really have much of a personality for me, personally. Like, I feel like she's just that generic strong girl who is kind of dumb type character. The airheaded kind of heroine who has a slightly sad past. It's just like, she's very by the numbers. She's very simplistic, and I don't mind her. But the issue is that's kind of how I feel about every single character for the most part. There are a few that I actually kind of enjoy, such as the hero known, or not really hero, but he is somebody who appears in the show throughout some of it called Michelle, or Mitchell, I don't know how you say it, but basically he's kind of funny. I actually think he's a more interesting character, and I kind of wish we could have seen a bit more of him just because he's just kind of ridiculous in his own way that I would have loved to see how he might have interacted with Boxo and all the kind of stuff he would go through, but overall, without really diving too deep into anything, I had fun with this anime. I didn't think it was especially interesting. Some of the stories could be pretty meh, but other times the stories could be really fun. And I think the specific stories I would enjoy, and like say I would enjoy, are probably the ones where they try to take it less seriously and just have fun with the idea of a vending machine in another world. Those are the only times I think I really do enjoy the show, so whenever they try to do something different, which we can go over more of that in the spoiler section, they just kind of fell flat for me, but whenever it was more of a slice of life type show, I actually was really enjoying myself, but yeah. 
That's all I've got to say without spoiling anything, so we're just going to hop into the spoilers section now. Here is a timestamp to when the spoilers end. If you have seen the show, I'd recommend sticking around here my thoughts, but if you haven't, you just skip to the end so you don't get any spoilers. But again, if you have seen it, I recommend sticking around here my thoughts. Or if you don't mind spoilers, you can stick around too. It doesn't mind me too much, but yeah, I'm going to catch up for five and enter the spoiler section. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so in terms of spoilers, I kind of have some mixed bags here. Like, I, there are some positives and negatives here. Like, as I said before, I do love how they incorporated the vending machine element into the show, especially early on, where it's revealed in the first few episodes that it's not just one vending machine. Box soak can turn into multiple different types of vending machines, and it really helps the fact that the main character is a big vending machine enthusiast, and it makes it so he's able to kind of give his own viewpoints on what vending machines can do and actually create these interesting vending machines that apparently might exist in the world. I don't know if they do or not, but it's pretty interesting early on with how he's able to do all these different vending machine things. Like there's a vending machine that can produce both cola and Mentos because there's a Coke and Mentos <laughs> joke in there in the second episode, which was funny and it was kind of creative with how they were doing that. But then as the story went on, even though I'm sure there are actual vending machines out like that out there in the world, I was starting to wonder just how crazy they were going to go with it. Like apparently there was a gas tank gasoline vending machine out there and there's a defibrillator type vending machine out there and it's just like there's so many bizarre vending machines that come into play later on apparently there's a cardboard box vending machine <laughs> as well there's just all these bizarre vending machines that they incorporate into the story that i don't know just some of them make sense some of them do not. It's just kind of a mixed bag with what they come up with. And I just wonder how many of these are actual vending machines or if some of them are actually made up. I don't know, but yeah. Moving past that for now, another thing I kind of want to talk about that I wonder why the show never really approached was the idea of this thing they introduced later on. Basically, in the later episodes, they introduced the idea of uh, Boxo has the ability to get his wish granted at the bottom of this dungeon where if he has this coin, he can get his wish granted. And he's super conflicted, like, oh my gosh, I want to stay a vending machine for the people, but I really want to inter like, interact with Lamas and stuff like that, and I want to be able to have fun with her. And he's super conflicted about this, and he doesn't know what to think. And then I'm just sitting there the whole time thinking, dude, why not just do both? You could just wish that you could transform from human to vending machine however you want. I don't see why you're so conflicted about this, but that's only something I kind of just kept thinking while that episode was playing out. Maybe the writer has something like that planned, maybe not. I don't really know, but I definitely found that that whole thing felt like a unnecessary conflict since there was a super easy solution to pull all that off, but meh. Moving on past that for now, I actually want to go back to Lamas and mention how she doesn't really have that much of a super interesting backstory, because the whole thing's literally, oh man, our village was attacked and Lamas was upset she couldn't do anything about it, and that's it. I wouldn't say it's like a super deep or super detailed backstory, I just wish that you know, we didn't have to worry always about the backstory stuff because it always just feels super just there. Not not really necessary. It's just there to try to give this character a bit more plot or whatever to make you care more about them. I just, I don't know. I don't really care much about Lamas right now. Maybe I will because I'm pretty sure a season two was announced a little while back and I'll probably end up watching season two since I won't lie, I had fun. I wouldn't say it's the best anime ever, but I had fun. But moving past all that for now, actually, I want to talk about another thing that kind of got on my nerves a little bit. And that's where there's an episode where it seems like Boxo gets sent down to a lower floor in the dungeon. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to be separated from Lamas. And he's going to be able to go on, on all these new adventures with new people. I kind of want to see where this goes before he's reunited with her. He's reunited with her almost immediately. Like, it's literally less than an episode. Next episode, he spends some time with some wolf kids i think they're called like the glutton group or something i don't know and after the, he interacts with them for a little bit near the last like five to ten minutes of the episode then he meets back up with lamas and the others and i'm just sitting there like wow you really missed the potential of giving him a whole new story with a whole new cast of characters you really kind of ruined the idea of maybe getting to see a new side to things it's just like nope he's back with her now and that's that i guess i guess that's a thing it's just like, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I felt like it really could have just been a bit more stretched out. And then there's the whole issue of the fact that after the first volume or so, and by volume, I mean the 
first few episodes because I'm not sure how many volumes were actually covered in this anime of the light novels. I just wonder why they later on tried to introduce these titan monsters with the wishes and stuff like that. I'm guessing it was just to provide the idea of Boxo getting some way to turn human. I'm guessing that's probably all it was for, but I don't know. I, just, I was never invested in those fights. Like, even in the last episode, which I'll be honest, kind of wasn't that strong. It was actually a pretty weak finale, in my opinion, because it's just kind of stuff happening. I'm not meant to question it, and I'm just trying my best to roll with it, but I just sit there like, what is happening right now? Why is this all occurring? Oh, okay, that's happening. Okay, moving on. I never really felt like I was really super invested in the story, even when it splits up like, oh no, these characters might die. And then I'm just sitting there like, no, of course not. Box is gonna have some other thing. Of course he has defibrillator vending machine things or whatever they're called. Because he has those, why won't he? He just, he has those because they can help provide these people that everyone thinks they're dead. It's just, I don't know. This show is really hard to take seriously when it's one of those many everyone can pretend to be dead but they're not actually going to be dead type stories. You're never meant to take it seriously because you know no one's actually going to die in the end. And I don't know, just... They kind of introduced this last final boss in the final episode and I sit there thinking, wow. This final boss is just kind of there. And he literally is just talks about how he's going to destroy them all and then Lamas just breaks his staff he's like, oh no, my staff! Well, bye! And then just, then just dips. He just dips. I don't know why. And just the rest of the episode is just kind of stuff happening before it ends with some of the girls kissing the vending machine before Lamas gets all nervous about kissing the vending machine, which I don't know why you're nervous about kissing a metal object, but okay. I just, it's really hard to say because I have a very mixed opinion on just this whole thing since I do love the fact that this show could have been just average or could have been super bad. But it was actually pretty fun. Like, for a show about a reincarnated vending machine, it was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't perfect, but I had a good time. Overall, I'm definitely down for a second season. And while there are some moments that are kind of stupid at times, and while the main cast isn't the best and most interesting thing ever, I still enjoyed myself. And honestly, while there are some things I kind of wish the show might tackle, like how Boxo can only say the few lines, which I thought was pretty ingenious at first. I thought it was really clever. I thought it was a really good idea because it kind of made so he had to communicate through certain ways. But after an entire 12 episode run, it actually got a bit annoying that I actually misunderstood in the final episode where he makes this vending machine that I mentioned before with a defibrillator type thing, vending machine. I thought he was going to buy this skill called telepathy to be able to communicate with the two people who need to use them and explain how the thing worked but then it turns out nope it was actually just to make things flow and I just thought they're like dang such a missed opportunity but I understand that trying to get him to talk would be a bit of a hindrance to the whole concept of he's not meant to say more than the pre-programmed lines but I don't know just felt like missed potential a little bit but I didn't mind it it's just a very decent show I wouldn't say it's anything super special but it's not like some shows out there I watch where people say they're average or decent and then I watch them and they're terrible or they're just, as they say, average. This show was fun. I wouldn't say it's perfect or anything, but it's still fun. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. So we're at the conclusion of this video. And what are my final thoughts? Overall, a decent anime. Not too good, not too bad, just decent. It still has its fun moments and I am surprised that it was actually more enjoyable than I originally thought it was going to be. But I wouldn't say it's anything super special. It's just a fun anime to just enjoy whenever you're bored or you really just need something to scratch that isekai itch. And this anime exists. And I'm glad I gave it a watch. There's not every single isekai out there that I really want to check out. There are some that I really don't want to bother with, like that new pig isekai that's coming out. Have no interest in that. Not going to watch that one. But there are ones that just surprise me, like So I'm a Spider, So What? It may not be great, it's pretty bad, but it's in a fun way, where I actually enjoyed it because of how bad it was. And then there's other shows, like Eminence and Shadow, where I end up being so happy I checked them out, because I could have just skipped over them and not known just how good they were. And there's other shows like Slime, where I think it's going to, to just be there, but then I actually really enjoy it a lot. You just never know what you're going to enjoy until you watch it, and after having sat down and watched this anime, I think it's a fun time that you can watch once, and then just kind of live your life without really thinking much about it after that, but I'm not against having more. And I'm pretty sure they announced that a season two is coming, so I'll probably end up tuning into that. And yeah, 
overall, a pretty solid time. Not perfect, definitely an anime that wouldn't catch my interest in like a whole bunch of different isekais, but on its own, just to sit down and watch it and enjoy it, it was fun. And that's why I give Reborn as a Vending Machine, I Now Wander the Dungeon, a 7 out of 10. It was just kind of average in a lot of ways, but it was still a lot of fun. And I'd be down to watch a second season since it's just one of those fun little slice of life-esque anime where sometimes it could be fun, but other times it could be iffy, especially when we get to the action set pieces. But overall, still a fun time. And yeah, that's all I have to say. And thank you all for watching. If you're new to the JGC Anime channel, don't forget to subscribe. I also do anime fans to the channel. And I will see you all around. Peace!